Good afternoon, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Mahalia Joseph and C News is live at noon. And I'm Mr. Mohammed with Sport. We start the news this afternoon with confirmation that a body was found on the compound of the Waterloo High School. Police are said to be at the scene. The male body, which was found floating in the Gulf of Paria behind the Hyatt Regency, has been identified as Alpha George. The body was fished out of the water at around noon on Monday. George is said to be a Tobagonian from Betsy Hope. To a developing story now, UK police are investigating a firearms incident near the British Parliament in London and have put the entire Westminster area on lockdown. A police officer was stabbed, the leader of the House of Commons said. The Parliament building, Rhodes and Westminster Underground Station have been secured by police. London's Metropolitan Police said on Twitter they were called at approximately 2.40 p.m. to reports of an incident near Westminster Bridge and that it was being treated as a firearms incident. The Met Police also stated they are treating the incident as a terrorist attack until they determine otherwise. We'll have more on this as more details come to hand. $26 billion was spent by the last government in five years to deal with crime. According to the Attorney General Faris al Rawi. the money was split between the Office of the Prime Minister, the Ministry of Justice, Ministry of Communication, Ministry of National Security, and the Office of the Attorney General. Despite this amount of spending, the AG said contrary to what has been said, crime was not much lower when the People's Partnership was in government. They tell you that crime is the worst that it has ever been and they use the barometer of murders and they tell you look at where murders are watch January 2016 January 2017 where we had 49 murders sorry 47 murders so I went back and I looked at the state of murders in 2014 and in 2013 and in January for the same year-on-year -year comparison it was one murder more he said the then People's Partnership government passed several bills to deal with crime, but they were never implemented. Because the UNC government came to the parliament and passed laws that they never put into operation. They came and they dealt with electronic monitoring, not operationalized. They came and they dealt with DNA legislation, not operationalized. They came and they dealt with preliminary inquiry, number one in 2011. Preliminary inquiry, number two in 2012. Preliminary inquiry, number three in 2014. An early morning fire gutted the Carib Rugby House in Port of Spain. The Carib Rugby House has been around for the last 87 years. Vice President of the club, Ronald Anand Singh, said this is a great loss for the club and its members. Our members reacted immediately, came down. Uh, subsequent to that, the fire came. They, they outed the fire and then police came uh, and did a report cordoned off the area. It seems to be a crime scene now. Uh, and we're just waiting again for the fire to come and give us an analysis of exactly what happened to give the report to the police. He said at this stage they have to focus on making alternative arrangements. 87 years of history and pictures and jerseys and, and, and pride put into this place uh, to be lost today to, to this unfortunate incident. This is the C News Live Report at noon. Remember, you can keep up to date with all the latest news on our website at ctvtt.com or you can check out our Facebook and Twitter pages at C News Live. Some other news now. Work on the San Fernando to Point Fortin Highway is set to begin in mid April 2017. This from the Minister of Works and Transport who said government is committed to re-energizing the construction sector. At a PNM meeting, he also announced plans are afoot to construct the Churchill-Roosevelt Highway extension to Manzanilla and said tenders will soon be made public for those wanting to be a part of the construction of the Curep interchange. Tenders have been closed for the construction of the San Fernando to Point Fortin Highway project and a contract is expected to be awarded soon, with construction expected to begin in mid-April. And ladies and gentlemen, for the first time, local contractors have been able to participate in the tendering process. And this will, was only possible 
because your government saw the need to tailor the packages so that local contractors have a fair chance of participating. For the first part, three packages were tendered just after April 11 more are expected to go out. This will take the highway all the way to Point Fourteen, and finally relief for the people of Labre, Point Fourteen, San Fernando and anybody who wants to travel <laughs> to the end of Trinidad. Minister Sinanan said tender packages for the first phase of the Churchill Roosevelt Highway to Manzanilla have also been sent out. That project we expect to be awarded by the end of May. So could you imagine a highway going to south and a highway going to east by June, July of this year? That will create the platform for the re-energizing of the construction sector. The minister also said tenders will be made available on Monday 27th, March 2017 for people to make bids for the construction of the QREP interchange, which should help in easing the traffic along the east-west corridor. And I give you the assurance that no interference will take place. So once we start that contract, there will be no start and stop like what happened under the last regime, where ministers had their favorite contractors, and if it didn't go that way, then they complained and they had to stop the project. These projects are expected to create hundreds of jobs, according to the minister, and they should also help re-energize the construction industry. Millions of dollars in billings have been made to the government by opposition Senator Gerald Ramdeen since the repeal of Section 34. This, as the Attorney General Faris al rawi lashed out at opposition Senator for constantly speaking out, at, out against the government proposed policies to deal with crime. By way of billings, when you bill the government, 32,858,901.67 dollars and cents. I understand why you have time. When you earn on the repeal of Section 34, 2.822,500 dollars, 2.8 million dollars on the Section 34 cases, we understand why you have time. A 36-year-old mother of three who was reported missing last Monday has been found in Manzanilla. This was confirmed by a family member a short while ago, according to police. Kizia Lu Luan Charles of Daniel Trace Malaba Arima was last seen on Sunday. Here's Ian Wallace with your afternoon weather. Calls for near normal rainfall, says the Meteorological Service. And at Piarco, it's now at 32 millimeters, which is normal. Meanwhile, out in Tobago, they've seen just slightly above normal rainfall, but every drop counts following the drought from last year. Today, the moisture will continue to move northwards from Ghana and Venezuela into Trinidad and Tobago, with a scattering of showers, especially across the hillsides, but generally cloudy skies expected nationwide. It will feel humid at 30 to 32 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, for mariners heading out, you will notice mostly choppy seas out in the Atlantic of 2 to 2.5 and meters, but near a moderate chop, in the Caribbean of one and a half to two meters there. With easterly winds, fresh at 15 to 20 knots, bringing some white caps at times, and northeasterly swells of nine seconds. That's your latest weather, and I'm meteorologist Ian Wallace. The Police Officers Association says it is angry that police officers are not being given the proper tools to carry out their duty, and when they do, members of the public are coming down on them. This after residents of East Port of Spain held a fiery protest after a police officer allegedly shot and killed Akim Armstrong for no reason. President of the association, Michael Seals, says claims like this can be avoided if the officers are properly equipped. I have just made an inquiry and asked whether or not the items that are applicable for officers to come out or to perform duty have been supplied to them during training so that they can use it and then when they come out on the job after they have been uh, assimilated into the use of it so that they can perform at a more proficient level. And there is no consistency in what I have asked. He suggested the use of pepper spray and tasers for officers. And that loss of life and my condolences go to the family. The same thing again. Poorly handled the situation. If we had pepper spray, we had tasers, we wouldn't be coming to answer these type of unnecessary issues. If the powers that be want to continue that way, but it's going to come to a time where there has to be some sort of intervention, action taken for us to avoid this situation. 
Chairman of the Teaching Service Commission, Dr. Faisal Ali, said while the Commission has completed a newly revised public service regulations, the Education Act itself is outdated. He was speaking at the Joint Select Committee on Service Commissions and Statutory Authorities. We brought a complete regulation. It is finished. However, I would like to point out that while the Commission was busy writing and finalizing these regulations, that we were actively, actively involved with the Ministry of Public Admin in the Institutional Strengthening Project. Chairman Ali said he doubts the Commission will submit the revised regulations to the Prime Minister because the revised regulations don't correspond with the Education Act of 1966. An act that has many gaps and in working with the Ministry of Public Administration and the consultants, we felt although we completed the regulations, we would not send these regulations to the Honorable Prime Minister. Instead, we have decided that we want to ask the Prime Minister and his cabinet to look at a framework for a new education act. Young people are not given a fair chance. The view of Nikolai Edwards, Vice Chairman of Policy, Advocacy and Projects, Commonwealth Youth Council. He said many decisions are being taken by government and the voice of the youth is not being heard despite them having to suffer the consequences. 60% of the Commonwealth is made up of young people. That's about 1.2 billion young people. And you have to harness the energy of the young people. And we have the ideas. We know the next steps because we are the ones who will inherit uh, powers, uh, positions, or rather, of authority and leadership in the countries across the world. And now we need to be prepared for mm -hmm. things such as that. And we feel as though we're not being given an opportunity That's it. to take advantage of, of positions, to look from the elders. He admitted the guidance of the elders are needed. But the fact is that young people are not being given the opportunities in the right manner. When we look at sometimes in, in Parliament and in positions of our political life, uh, you see young people being used as pawns so just simply to get fever with uh, the population. Well, it's time for me to turn you over to Nasira Mohammed, who is going to give you an update on what's happening in the world of sport. Nasira. Well, Mahalia, it is the season for golf. We, look, we like to take advantage of the dry weather, but it's been a bit rainy recently. That didn't stop the launch of the TNT Amateur Open. The 110th Trinidad and Tobago Amateur Open was launched at the St. Andrews Golf Club. The host venue for the tournament from March 30th through April 2nd. Approximately 140 golfers from across the Caribbean will compete not only for the top prize and some spanking new trophies, but the top four finishers will receive qualification into the Jamaica Classic in June, which was recently added as a stop on the PGA Latino America Tour. Uh, the level it once was. So... I think this will be the start of even bigger things. Like I said, with the professionals on board now, hopefully we will, you know, in the future we'll be able to get more sponsorship and take it to another level. Defending champion Sachin Kumar is unable to defend his title because of exams at university, clearing the way for a new champion to be crowned this year. But the local golfers and the 24 currently registered from Barbados, Canada, Curacao, Grenada, St. Kitts, St. Lucia and the USA will be relishing this opportunity to effectively kill two birds with one stone, including a chance to play on the PGA Tour. The tournament also helps to select this country's participants for the various tournaments, including the prestigious Caribbean Championships or Holman Cup, and one youngster from TNT who currently resides abroad is ready for the challenge. Dr. Rochelle Mohammed, a director of the Trinidad and Tobago Boxing Board of Control, lamented that the sport was played by ad hoc strategic planning, which hampered this country from fielding properly trained and prepared boxers at the Olympics. Dr. Mohammed said it was the mandate of the current board to reverse the archaic governance of the boxing board and get more athletes into international competitions have a boxer in every class representing the Olympics. When I was watching it, I said, why don't we have more? So this is the solution. We have three years left to plan or two years 
and hopefully we will have a larger representation of Trinidad and Tobago from Trinidad and Tobago in the Olympics where a boxer in each class. Well, that's it for sport for today. And that's how we end the C News report at noon. I'm Mahalia Joseph. And I'm Nasira Mohammed. Remember, for up to date and breaking news throughout the day, you can visit the C News website at ctvtt.com. Have a good afternoon.